Welcome to another episode. My name's Jose Naharo, and today we're gonna do a Walmart update. We're gonna take a look at their most recent earnings, and we're also gonna take a look at any updates due to the coronavirus. So let's get started. All the information you've seen here is either gonna come from seekingalpha.com, some news article that I mentioned, and Walmart's investors website. So if you guys wanna do more information, feel free to check them out. One more thing before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys. I definitely enjoy the content I am posting, and I hope you guys too. I'm also streaming on Twitch and Mixer Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 o'clock. That says 8 o'clock, but it's going to be at 9 o'clock Eastern time. So make sure to follow me, guys. You guys will see the information down here below. But if, if you're listening to the podcast, Jose Naharo Stocks on Mixer or Twitch. All right, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is how Walmart has performed stock price wise compared um, to its all time highs. So most companies out there right now are up are probably still below 20 percent from their all time highs, even though I'm not sure 100 percent now that we had a uh, we had a nice big update today. The market was up about 3.5 percent, somewhere around those values. Um, Walmart is actually up 5.2 percent, 5.1 percent for the day, sitting at one hundred and fifteen dollars. And sitting at $115, this company had an all-time high of $122.58. So this company is only down 6% from its all-time highs. 6% is actually pretty good compared to how the rest of the market has behaved throughout this whole experience. Next, we're going to take a look at some articles that I collected here. The first one comes from Biz journals.com and this title is called walmart adds no contact shopping for another layer of safety so from this pretty much from this article it just talks about how if you now use walmart's application you can use walmart pay and be able to pay for your checkout during your checkout without ever touching anything else but your phone and i think this is great for two things first it's going to push people to go to walmart because they're going to know that hey we i don't have to pay via and we a credit card via cash i can just use this application and i'll be in a, it, it's a higher level of safety right um so it's going to entice more people to go to walmart the second thing is going to entice people to download this walmart application and with more people downloading an application it's always good for the company the first thing is that's going to happen is now more people um if more people use the application and once they have checkout Walmart will be able to collect more information from its customers. How old were the uh, customer that purchased? How much did they purchase? What did they purchase most of? What did they not purchase? So stuff like this, this type of information is very crucial for companies like this. And now they'll be able to target their customers. They'll be able to send emails. They'll be able to send special offers to that customer specifically on what that customer buys. So I think this this is going to have a nice long term return for Walmart. The second article comes from The Motley Fool and it's called Why Target, Walmart, and Bed and Beyond were sinking today. So this was March 25th and this was last Wednesday. Um, and the reason I want to take a look at this article is because it mentions some of Walmart's competitors and we get to see how they are reacting with this type of um, environment going on. Um, so the first thing is that Target was one of the first few to pull its guidance and is also suspending buybacks. As of right now, Walmart has not pulled its buybacks. It still has an, a, a decent amount of cash for buybacks. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure if they have pulled their guidance. Um, they've also talked about how Target as a whole is seeing a huge surge in comparable sales compared to, um, compared to um, last quarter. And they say that they have seen uh they have seen comparable sales increase by 20 percent so that that's a dramatic number but they do mention that most of these sales are coming from the lower margin items which are foods essential beverages and things in those categories and those categories were up more than 50 percent but then they also mentioned that the higher margin margin um, items like the apparels and accessories are down more than 20 percent so even though they are increasing in comparable sales they are decreasing in higher margin sales so more people are just buying more items that have lower lower margin sales so something to take a note at we know that now we know that for the upcoming quarter we're definitely going to see 
gross margins drop down in both Target and Walmart for, for sure. And they also mentioned that they are going to have more expenses. So now these big retailers are making sure they keep their, their businesses clean. They're making sure the stores are clean. They're making sure everything's up in inventory. They're paying their employees more. They're giving some bonuses. So all these expenses are going to add up and are going to also drop down the margins for these companies. And it's something just to take a note of and to keep in mind of when thinking about these companies. Next, we're going to talk about certain countries, right? Certain countries due to the coronavirus are literally shutting down and India is one of them. So places like that are also going to affect these retailer companies. So it's good to understand what kind of diversified are these are these companies and in what countries they're they're behaving. And that's something we're going to take a look at for Walmart. The next article I'm going to talk about comes from the New York Post, and I just thought this was a pretty funny, something to lighten the mood um, right now. And Walmart reports an increase in sales to of tops, but not of pants during the coronavirus lockdown. And like just this picture shows, right, uh, even me working from home, I just got to make sure that from my bottom, my top half is looking nice. My bottom half doesn't really matter. Um, so that I think that's that's pretty funny to actually see data that shows that, hey, more people are buying tops instead of bottoms. All right. So now we're going to move on to this company's earnings. Walmart for quarter four. So this is quarter four, their most recent earnings. They reported February 18th, 2020. So about a month ago, it's not too far off. Um, so they reported non-gap earnings per share of a dollar and 38 cents, which missed by six cents. So not a big miss. Gap earnings per share was $1.45, which beat by two cents. Um, and then we have revenue of $141 billion. This company sells a lot of stuff. Remember, most of these items are low margins or very mid-teen margins. So it's understandable that this company sells a lot of products. And that is 2.1% year-to-year um, uh, increase in, in revenue. All right, so now we're going to take a look at this company's earnings presentation, um, which again, this is just a month old and I highlight all the important information. So here we're going to take a look at guidance. We're going to take a look at shareholder buyback. We're going to take a look at their revenue and any highlights based on their revenue. And after that, we're going to take a look at this company's balance sheet. Unfortunately, right, this company did give a full year guidance for 2021 and they say their estimated um, net sales growth would be about 3% for this upcoming year but i mean let's be honest with everything that's going on we should not be taking these guidance especially since this was a month before um before the true everything really started moving around um so it's, we're, we're not going to take a look at this but we're going to take a look at some other information for future guidance in, in a bit the second thing i want to take a look at is this company does have a share purchase program they currently have 5.7 billion dollars authorized to use and this was for out of a 20 billion dollar authorization that came in october 2017 so since 2017 this company has actually been buying a nice amount of shares right in 2018 2019 20 this company has been buying about probably over six thousand dollars worth of of free of shares repurchased just in the past two three years on average um and they still have 5.7 billion dollars so we'll see if they will take a look next quarter to see if they're actually going to be using this money um at the moment they have not canceled their share buyback program but it is a possibility that they might all right so next before we continue remember i may i mentioned this company made about 141 billion dollars in, in in total revenue and i think it's important to understand where this money comes from so we can understand where our biggest risk is coming from um, so this company, $141 billion, 65% of that total revenue came from Walmart United States. So a lot, a huge portion of this company's revenue, over half comes from the United States. The other 11% and 11% comes from Sam's Club. If you guys don't know, Walmart does own Sam's Club and they um, right now 11% of total revenue comes from Sam's Club. And this is not only Sam's Club in the United States, this is Sam's Club international i know there's a sam's club in china but i'm not sure what other countries have sam's club but sam's club united states and sam's clubs for sure um, for china make up 11 percent of the total revenue the remaining 24 percent comes from walmart international and walmart international is broken down into four countries it's broken into um canada broken down into uk 
China, and then what they call Walmax. And Walmax is Mexico and Central America. So we can see 65% comes from the United States. So it's pretty, uh, it's, it's not bad for investors to know that Walmarts are still open around the clock right now. So they're still able to produce a huge portion of their total revenue. And the other 24% are distributed between four other countries and 11% are distributed between China, United States, mainly due to Sam's Club. And we know Sam's Club is open and China is restarting. So that might actually help out, um, uh, might help out Walmart in, in the future quarter two, quarter two to make sure it doesn't take that big of a hit. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at um, this company's pretty much income statement. And here I'm only gonna be taking a look at the full year of 2019 compared to the full year of 2018. And they did the math for us, it's pretty cool. Um, pretty good for them, I'm happy they did that. Total revenue for the year was $523 billion. That is insane. And it's up 1.9% compared to 2018. Net sales is also up about 1.9% compared to 2018. Next, we have membership and other income. Membership and other income is down about 0.9%. But this 0.9% is only $38 million decrease. So $38 million decrease compared to their total revenue of $523 billion. It should not be something to, to really throw a red flag. Um, next, this company does have an operating income of $20.5 billion. This is down 6.3% compared to the full year last year. Next, we're going to take a look at interest expense. And I do like to take a look at interest expense because it tells me if interest expense is increasing, it, tell, it, let me, it, it lets me know that, hey, this company is taking out more debt than usual. Um, so it's something to keep an eye out. And if it is decreasing compared to the same time last year, then it tells me this company is paying off debt. Um, so right now, this company has uh, $2.4 billion of interest paid. Not a big... It's 2.4 billion is a lot of money, but compared to the scheme of this whole money operation this company has, I don't think it's much. This company does did increase its interest by almost 13%, and that's an extra $281 million. But 281 million, even though it's it's a 13% increase, $281 million, I don't think it's anything to even bother looking at. Um, the next thing we want to take a look at is just adjusted earnings per share. Adjusted earnings per share um, in, uh, were $4.93 for 2019, and it's up 4% compared to the same time last year. So we can see, right, this is a pretty, for me, it seems like a slow grow. It is a huge company, but it is a slow growing company. 1.9% total revenue increase and a 0.4% increase in adjusted earnings per share. Um, to me, this is a slow growing company. So this is something I will take in mind when I do my valuation on, on what I invest in this company. All right, so next we're gonna take a look at Walmart US. Some, just some quarterly highlights for this company um, so you guys can understand where this company is at. Um, E-commerce for the United States grew 35%. Um, and this is mainly because there was a huge increase in online grocery shopping. And this is only going to increase this quarter because more people are, are trying to do the online grocery opposed to going to the stores and were and risk getting sick. They do mention that the strength comes in the grocery health and wellness home and electronics par, um, items, but it was partially offset by softness in toys media, gaming, and apparel. And I think this is pretty much how it's also gonna be for this quarter. The only thing I might see increase here might be toys. I guess more parents are gonna start buying more toys for the kids to keep them busy. But I don't see a huge increase in clothes anytime soon. Um, I, I, I know I haven't gone out and bought toys. I have bought media and gaming items, but for me, it has been more through a digital channel opposed to going through a store. So again, I don't see that also increasing. I do think that grocery, health, wellness, home and electronics are going to do good, especially because Walmart is one of the few stores open, right? And one of the few stores that has everything in there. So more people are going to pretty much just buy everything they can from Walmart instead of going store to store. For example, if I just wanted to buy a cheap TV, I'm not going to go to Best Buy anymore right now just because I don't want to go to Best Buy and then do grocery shopping at Walmart. I can just buy my TV at Walmart and also do my grocery shopping at the same time 
and kind of eliminate my risk per se by going to two different stores. Then they also mentioned for quarter four, they had 3,200 grocery pickup locations. They had more than 1,600 stores with same day grocery delivery, and they have about 1,500 stores that had pickup towers. So this is actually pretty good, and it's good for this upcoming quarter, right? So they were ahead of the game, and I do think this is one place where these, this company can actually be Amazon. The, um, Walmart has the infrastructure; they have all these, they have all these stores, they have, and they already had look all this available to them already so i think this is one place where where walmart can actually outshine amazon there's not many things it can it can but this is one where it could finally we're just going to take a look at sam's club um just a quick look at them sam's club net sales if we use fuel it's up 1.6 percent if we don't count fuel it's up 0.9 percent again we can see this company even though it's a big hitter it is a slow growth growth company growing less than two percent in every sector um and then sam's club's e-commerce sale increased by 33 percent this past quarter which i guess this i think this is pretty nice right we can see their e-commerce business is definitely picking up and i think unfortunately due to the circumstances right now with the coronavirus we are seeing more people order online so it's gonna help walmart in the long term um increase their e-commerce business even more all right, so the final thing we're going to take a look at before I give my thoughts on the company is this company's balance sheet. So first, let's just take a look at total current assets. Total current assets for this year compared to January 30. So this is January 31st of 2020 compared to January 31st of 2019, so a year ago. So total current assets are pretty flat. Um, and we do, if you guys are looking here, you guys can see cash and cash equivalents increased by about two billion dollars this year and you guys are gonna be like hey cash increased by a nice amount that's a good thing but no if we take a look at prepaid expenses last year this company had prepaid about two billion dollars worth more um compared to this year so this is pretty much one thing where you have to be careful when taking a look at current assets and current liabilities i always think it's important to look more at total current assets at the end of the day um just because it all depends on when they pay things Last year, they paid their prepaid expenses a little bit earlier, so they had a little bit less cash. This year, they have a lot more cash, but they paid a little bit less of prepaid expenses. But at the end of the day, it's sitting at the same values. Next, let's take a look at this company's total asset. Total asset for this company right now is sitting at $236 billion. And that's about a $16 billion increase compared to last year. And you're gonna be like, Jose, that's a lot of dollars increase. But no, if you guys have been following, you know that last year, this company companies did not have to report a certain asset that now they do. If we add that certain asset that they had to report and remove this one that they no longer report, it's pretty much flatlined compared to the same time last year. So not much has changed in their total assets and their total current assets, which is not a bad thing. It's definitely not a good thing. I would definitely like to see an increase in total assets, in total current assets, especially at that. But seeing no increase is not a bad thing, as long as liabilities is not seeing a jump. So next, let's take a look at total current liabilities. Total current liabilities, again, is pretty flat line, um, sitting at $77.7 .7 billion. Pretty flat compared to last year, only $200 million more. That's flat. So there's no real increase in total current liabilities. Next, let's take a look at total long-term debt. This company has about $200 million more in long-term debt, sitting at $43.7 billion. Again, not a huge increase, nothing to really throw a red flag my way. And then this company has also seen an increase in just how I mentioned assets that weren't previously reported. There were liabilities that previously weren't reported. Um, so if we take away that, this pretty much, this company... Um, did increase its liabilities, but similar to assets, it, it, if we take away those, it's pretty much a flat line type of day. So there's no real, this to me is an okay balance sheet. It's a pretty balanced balance sheet. No pun intended. No increase in total assets, no real increase in total liabilities. Um, different, it's an okay ratio. Um, this company has a little bit of cash um, compared to its long-term debt. But this company's total inventory matches, kind of matches its long-term debt. So this company has 
44 billion dollars in inventory and has 43 billion dollars in long-term debt and that's something to be expected that this company has low cash because this company has items that it keeps selling so it sells items get cash it uses that cash to buy more items to then resell so this company usually has rotating cash so it should never have a lot of cash at once all right so now my thoughts on this company we're going to take a look here at seekingalpha.com i love using their website for multiple reasons but this is my favorite reason is taking a look at estimated annual earnings per share um, and this is based on analysts that actually do this is their job and they're almost pretty close to the money so i try to use it to to some degree um, in the last 90 days this company has been revised down by 19 different um, analysts which tells me that hey people are already accounting for the coronavirus and are decreasing those um those projected earnings per share which give me even more confidence that they're closer to what's expected so i'd like to look at earnings per share two years from now so that would be january 2022 and they estimate five dollars and 14 cents me five dollars and 14 cents would give this a forward pe ratio right now it's at 115 dollars divided by 5.41 gives this a pe ratio of 21.2 to be honest, um, I personally would not purchase this stock, but that does, mean, that does not mean this is a bad investment. Just because I'm not willing to purchase this stock doesn't mean it's a bad investment. Here, I'm not counting for dividends. This is also a company that has been strong through this through this mini recession or whatever you guys want to call it. And it, it, it has been strong. So it definitely has its perks. But to me, I honestly feel like with my age, I, I, I'm more into a high growth growing company and a company that I can see more value being added. Um, for me, uh, this company I, at most, um, I would probably pay is a 20 PE ratio, which would give me a, let's see, a 20 PE ratio at times $5 and 41 would give me $108 and two cents. I know this company was sitting at that price not too long ago, just last week. So I wish I would have done this video then. Uh, but that's something I would feel comfortable paying. Um, again, it doesn't mean it's a bad investment. It just means to me, it's not. I feel like I can use my money to invest elsewhere. And these are the major reasons. One, a slow growth. That is the main reason for me. Slow growing company. The balance sheet is OK. It's not a great balance sheet. But it's not a bad one either it's pretty balanced balance sheet like i mentioned then we see that this company has some really good plans i definitely like we seeing an increase in their e-commerce business i definitely see this company I, I enjoy that they're pushing out their application and they're being smart with how they use it they're like hey because of your safety and yes that might be the true reason but at the end of the day it's gonna increase people using that um the no contact shopping and getting walmart application um, next, we did see a lot of good things. We see, um, we did see, what else did we see? A strong share buyback program. This company has a dividend and it is growing, right? It, we see that e-commerce go up. Uh, we do understand that United States makes up 65% of the total revenue. So it's something to keep in mind of when seeing if more of these stuff should close down. If stores do begin to close down, this is something that will definitely affect Walmart. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to post on the comments below and feel free to post anything. So take care, have a good night and see you next time.